Hello everyone, this is Megavoltaic, here to show you all another wonderful tutorial on how to do things with your computer. Um, for those of you that may use a PS3 controller with your computer, you may notice that pretty much the only program that you're going to be pointed to is Motion Enjoy, which has the ever infamous DS3 tool. There's a multitude of problems with this tool, and the main problem is that it's kind of clunky and it doesn't do what it's supposed to. I don't have it anymore, why am I searching for it? Um, it's really bad, and the only way to use the controllers is you have to plug it in and then click enable, which means booting up the program. And that also means being on the internet, so you can't even use the drivers if you're not connected to an internet connection. There is a workaround with this with the better DS3 program, but it's not, it doesn't fix the problem, it just offers a lesser of two evils, if you will. So, finally I said, well, there has to be some sort of alternative method of doing this, something that's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work, workable, a little bit more able to work with. I can't find the correct words. But yeah, something more like a PS3, where I could plug in the controller and just use it. Or, if I have a Bluetooth dongle, I could just plug it in, unplug it, and it'll already be synced, and I can just press the sync button, and be on my way. Um, so after looking for for a little bit, I found this amazing driver called the C the SCP DS3. Well, yeah, it's a, there's really no official name for it, but it was uh, created by Scarlet Crush, as you can see right here. So kudos to him, and it allows you to basically use your PS3 controller on your computer like how you would on a PS3. Simply plug it in, use it. If you have a Bluetooth dongle, it'll pair it immediately. You can just unplug it and start using it immediately. And it works amazing. I've been using it for about a week now, and I haven't had too much of a problem. Everything's been able to work with. Um, there are a lot of requirements. A lot of them should be pretty much fulfillable, but some of them could still deter you. And if you can't fulfill some of these requirements, you might have to consider sticking with Motion and Joy until you can. Um, some of them are pretty basic. Uh, you have installing Microsoft.net, Visual C, latest DirectX. Also make sure that you have the latest Xbox 360 drivers installed because this control, this, these drivers will uh, force your controller to take on the X input drivers. So you're gonna have to have them. Um, this is probably gonna be a deal breaker for some people. You have to have genuine PS3 controllers. I'm not completely sure if Motion Enjoy requires genuine controllers. I don't think it does because I'm able to use my aftermarket controller. But um, you cannot use aftermarket controllers with these drivers. So if all you have are such controllers, you're going to pretty much have to stick with Motion Enjoy. If you plan on using the Bluetooth, then a Bluetooth dongle. If it's not compatible with Motion Enjoy, it probably won't be compatible with these drivers. And if you have a problem with those drivers, there's a whole bunch of uh, forum posts you can look up because of uh, something I'm going to explain in a second. And then number seven is administrative rights. Just make sure you run everything as admin or make sure that you are an admin. Kind of basic stuff. So, like I was saying with the drivers and um, all of this, if you're coming from Motion Enjoy, you're going to have a lot of problems from the get-go. And the quickest way to fix a lot of these problems is to first uninstall Motion Enjoy. And then second, plug in your controller, go to Start, right click com Computer, click Properties, go to your Device Manager. And while the controller is plugged in, you're probably going to see something around here talking about uh, a Motion Enjoy X input, whatever. This, these are the drivers that Motion Enjoy installed when you install Motion Enjoy. So you want to right click that. And then click, uh, and then click uninstall. And as you're uninstalling it, you're going to see a checkbox that says uninstall drivers. And you're going to check that and click OK. And that that will uninstall everything related to Motion Enjoy and your computer. Once you've done all that, then you can start here, and you'll have less problems. 
So when you download the program from Scarlet Crush, you're going to get a zip file. A zip file that I had open, but for some reason do not anymore. There. It will contain these folders. And by the way, the link isn't going to be in the description, so you can just click that if you need to. You're going to see a folder called SCP Server. Go inside it, and you're going to see bin and source. We're only concerned with the bin folder. Go inside there. Next, you want to make a directory for where you want to put these files. I already have a directory. I keep mine inside my program files, inside a folder called PS3 Controller. But you can choose any directory, but that's the most convenient for me because it's out of the way. And you want to basically just drag everything out of here and toss it into your respective folder. This folder contains the drivers, the monitor, and the service for the actual uh, drivers. The service plays a huge role in uh, how the Bluetooth dongle works and how controllers are associated with pads. Once you've done that, go into your folder that you've made and double click this scpdriver.exe. Making sure that your Bluetooth dongle and your controller are plugged in before you do this. Once you start up the SCP driver installer, uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff here that you're not going to know what it's going to do. And configure service and Bluetooth driver will already be checked. You could check force install if you have any problems with this afterwards, but I'll go over that later. So once everything's plugged in, you're going to click install and it's going to install the drivers accordingly. Again, if you have problems, check force install and then click install. It'll install everything regardless of whether or not it's plugged in or not. And those will install the drivers for the controller being recognized and your Bluetooth dongle. Once you install those drivers, you'll notice if you start up the task manager that the service SCP, this should be around here, SCP DS3 server will start running. This service is basically the equivalent of when you turn your PS3 on. So stopping the service is the equivalent of turning it off. All of the controllers lose their ports and whatnot. So, how do we use these amazing drivers once they're installed? Well, uh, the SCP monitor shows us everything that there is to know about our controller at the moment. But because I need to show you guys this from the get-go, let me stop the service by right-clicking and stopping, and then start it back up. Okay, so, like I said, that was the equivalent of us turning on the PS3. And there's no controller sync to it at all. Now, when you start up the SCP monitor, it will appear inside your taskbar. However, this does not run automatically, so you might want to create a shortcut like I have. Or, if you want to be even more hardcore, you can have it start up on Windows Startup. However you want to do it. Anywho, it will appear inside your taskbar and you can double click it. It will notice that if you have a Bluetooth dongle plugged in, it will show a host address and all this other jazz. And then to the right, it will show the pads. It will show that regardless of whether or not you have a dongle in. These pads basically uh, are, will display the MAC address of the controllers that you plug in or sync. So, in my hand, I have a PS3 controller. I would cut the footage of it, but I don't have a camera on me at the moment, so you'll just have to take my word for it. I'm going to now plug this controller in with my USB cord cable. God, I have no choice of words right now. As soon as I plug it in, it realizes that I have a controller plugged in. It shows in a sort of hexadecimal amount here how long it's been plugged in. And it shows its battery state, which can ra range from charging, high, medium, low, or none if there's no battery pack. I've noticed that when I was plugging in one of my aftermarket controllers, which does not have a uh, battery in it. The controller didn't work, in case for those of you that are still wondering if you can use aftermarket controllers. So. It's plugged in, and it says charging, and on my controller, I see uh, one flashing. So it's charging, and it's also on port one. If I go to devices, you'll notice that you're going to see PlayStation 3 controller. This is just a sort of name or something. It's not really there. What we're really focused on is the Xbox 360 controller for Windows. If I right-click and go to game controller settings, I'll see it over here. And I click properties, and all my stuff works a la an Xbox 360 controller. Which brings us to a bit of a standstill. 
if you were the type of person that wanted to use uh, the controller for, say, the PS2 setups and all the other setups that Motion Enjoy has, this does not support that. The controller will, at the end of the day, be read as a Xbox controller, and you do not have the choice of changing that unless you use a third-party tool simultaneously. So you're going to be out of luck if you wanted something that was that handled it as simply as uh, Motion Enjoy did. So now everything is red. Uh, the right analog is red, my triggers are red, D-pad is red, all 10 buttons are red, and the uh, PS button is red as the Xbox button, which doesn't really have a benefit unless you're playing a game for Windows Live, or you're using an external program where you can map that to something. However, as for the cool part that I was talking about, once you plug it in, it automatically pairs the controller. So I could unplug it, and it will sync like so. Also displaying the battery amount. It's full. How about that? And the controller still works wirelessly. It's great. So now if you'll notice when I disconnect the controller, which for this program is holding L1, R1, and the PS button for two seconds, like so, it says the MAC address and then reserved. This is extremely vital to people using programs where you cannot hot swap controllers. Programs more likely emulators. Emulators don't support this a lot, especially uh, the older ones like JNES or ZSNES. If the controller gets unplugged during uh, the operation of the emulator, you pretty much have to restart the whole emulator, which can sort of be annoying. And this gets even more annoying when you find out that these controllers have a forced idle period, which you can change by right-clicking the uh, SCP monitor in the taskbar and then clicking configuration, and you can max it out at 30, but it's still gonna idle because it needs to save battery life. However, by having it reserved here, it basically just stops reading input, but the controller is still there, or, or at least the computer thinks it's still there. So if your controller times out, you don't have to worry about restarting an emulator, say if you have a gaming session open and you leave for more than 30 minutes. And then when I want to come back in, all I have to do is press the sync button and it syncs right back to it, like so. Awesome. Now, I made a bit of a mistake because I sort of attempted to do this trial, but now I have to leave my computer for a second to grab my other controller, which is right here. And I think this controller the same way if I want to do uh, two-player. I just plug it in once. It reads it automatically. And then I unplug it. It scans. And there it is. This has a medium battery. And if you'll notice, it popped it up right here. Like so. All my stuff is working. Oh, and L3 buttons. L3 and R3. And it's the same case. Now, however, unlike the PS3, my laptop does not have an option where I can hold the PS button and change my controller slot. This gets, um, this is probably the only part that makes this kind of uh, unbearable, but it's still much more manageable than Motion Enjoy ever was. Like I said before, starting and stopping the service is like starting and stopping a PS3. When you s turn off a PS3, the slots get reset on the controller. So the controller that I may have for controller 2, if I turn off the PS3, turn it back on and sync it again, and sync the player 2 controller, it will sync as player 1, because that will be the first controller I sync to the console. And the same logic is used here. If I stop the service, like so, it will drop all of the reserved slots and erase all everything. Everything. Then once I start back up, it will be waiting for input. Now my controllers are already paired to my computer, so all I have to do is press the PS button. And there you go. And I can press this one. There. And just like magic, they work just the way that you expect them to. And I swap the slots. So, as you can see, it's actually really simple, and it makes using your PS3 controller on your computer 
less of a hassle. And especially for people that have uh, their computer hooked up to a TV playing something, maybe they have a whole suite of emulators, or maybe they have a whole bunch of games on Steam that they play with a controller. This makes that process 10 times easier. And I've loved it every second of it. It's been great. But even if you don't have a Bluetooth dongle, this still makes the process so much easier than Motion Enjoy. You don't have to boot up that laggy, conflicting program. It used to take maybe a half hour for me to figure out Motion Enjoy every time I wanted to play a game. But now I can just plug it in and play it. And I can play it wirelessly, which has even sort of made me hook up my laptop to my TV and have long sessions of playing Donkey Kong Country 3. I am that lame. So, as you can see, I've just shown you how to get a nice workaround to Motion Enjoy with the amazing SCP drivers. It does everything you need it to, and something I didn't mention, the input, there is no input delay, the input's very nice, everything works as it should on a computer. And it's just great to use. Um, couple more things you should know. This does support Rumble. So any games that you have that support Rumble to an X input controller will be supported if you go inside the uh, Win64 folder and use the SCP user. And then check uh, the advanced box. You can test out the Rumble on the controllers. You can hear it, right? Yep. So if you have any games that support that kind of thing... Okay, that's going to keep doing that. So if you have any controllers that support the rumble feature... I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you have any games that support the rumble feature, one that I have is DuckTales Remastered, and that works perfectly with the vibration, then it'll work just fine. And so now everything works the way it should. So this has been Mega Take, showing you guys an awesome way on how to connect controllers, and I hope to see you all at some point in my lives. Thank you and have a great morning.